let's upgrade a Mac Mini. <clears throat> All right, I have a different sparkling water today. This is not LaCroix, it's a different brand called Aha. And this flavor, this is black cherry and coffee. Yeah, that's actually good. I like that. That's a thumbs up for me. Thanks, Aha. Also, if you're a church leader and you're looking for more in-depth training on media and video related topics, I'm actually putting together a video basics training course showing you actually how to shoot high quality video for your church. Click the first link in the description below and you'll instantly get access to the free training that I have that is talking about the five things you need to consider before purchasing a camera. So if that sounds interesting to you, just click the first link in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. We're upgrading a used Mac Mini from 2012. We are upgrading the RAM and the SSD. And uh, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to do just that. So let's get started. This is everything that you need. You obviously need a Mac Mini, you need the new hard drive, the couple sticks of RAM, and then also a little toolkit with a few tools to um, be able to unscrew some things and open some things up. Everything will be linked down below in the description for you to check out if you need to pick anything up. So first thing here, we need to take the back off of the Mac Mini. So we'll just take our thumbs here and slide that over and then it'll just fall right out. There we go. So first thing first, we gotta take the old RAM out. So the only thing you have to do here is just kind of push back on these little two metal, um, these two little metal um, bars here. We just push out like that and there it pops out. Then we can just slowly, gently pull it out. So there we go. That's the first one, set that off to the side. And then there's another little metal bar on each side here. Um, that we can just pop out again, and boom, there it is. And we can slowly maneuver it out. There we go. Now onto the fan here. So just grab the right tool that'll work for um, these screws. This is the one, the red one should work. We have to unscrew each of these three screws here. So now that these are unscrewed, we should just be able to lift the fan right out. So now the fan is connected right here, so we just need to pop this off of the logic board um, very carefully so that we don't actually hurt anything else that it's connected to, but just be able to pop it off from the connector. There we go. So now we can move this off to the side as well. So next we need to unscrew these three spots right here. So just find the right tool for that. It should be the black one and just unscrew these three. We can also unscrew these right here as well. So I'm gonna do that. So now we can lift this up and out here. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit it off to the side like this. It is connected to the computer with this cable, but you don't actually have to unplug the cable uh, to get in there and move the hard drive. So I'm just gonna leave this off to the side like this. No reason to unplug it unless I absolutely have to. All right, so now I'm gonna move this piece out right here. So I gotta unscrew this other screw on this side. So now let's pull this out. See how I maneuver this. Oop, there goes a screw, grab that. So we moved everything out of the way. Now we can pull the hard drive out. So to unplug the hard drive, we need to pull up on this little connector port here. So I'm just gonna kind of ply this out. Oh, there it goes real easy like that. And now it's just a matter of sliding this, maneuvering this out. And there we go. I need a couple things from this drive to put on the new drive. So first off, this little connector here, I'm gonna pull this off. So there's a little piece of tape right here that we just need to kind of pry off. It's just holding it on. So I'm gonna peel this back. All right, so there's the tape. I'm gonna try and salvage that if I can. All right, and so now this will just slide right off. That's what we need. I'm also gonna take these little pins out of the side of the drive here. These are used to actually uh, maneuver it into the right spot and kind of hold it in place there. And if I can show you, there are a couple small holes there where those pins go in. 
to fit. So that's what we need these, these little pins for. So now I'm gonna pull out the new hard drive and uh, first I'm gonna just put the ribbon cable back on this one. I'm gonna just push it in there and then I'm gonna take the tape and actually reapply it right there to the seam just to help keep it in place. And now let's put the mounting screws uh, on top of it so it'll slide in uh, this direction. So I'm gonna put the screws right there on the top here. All right, so now the key is to actually get this hard drive into position. This is the part where I definitely uh, struggled with the most when putting this whole thing together. Um, it's definitely a little tricky to get it into the right spot, but uh, here it goes. Let's see what we can do here. What I'm really aiming for is the two little holes at the very top there, and I don't know if you can see that, but two little holes, there's one right there. So that's what I'm aiming for with the little pins on the top of this drive. So, uh, let's see. Ooh, it's in the right spot, and now it's just a matter of connecting the end of the, the little cable here um, to the rest of the logic board. So just need to kind of gently uh, snap it into place. Here. There we go, all right, so now it's into place, we're good. Now it's time to reassemble everything back together. First thing to bring back in is this little piece of plastic here. We're gonna slide this in and then put that bottom screw back in place. We put this screw back in there and tighten that up. There we go, that's good. Now it's time to move this piece back into place. We're gonna try and just slide it, maneuver it back into place. And there we go. All right, time to put the screws back on this. Now we can also add back these three screws right here. We can drop these back in and tighten those up. We can bring the fan back in and reattach it. You just have to line the cable back up to the connector and just gently, gently tap it in. There we go. Oh, starting to come out, there we go. All right, so now put the fan back in place here right there and we can then tighten these screws back down. So now that we got all that done, it's time for the easiest part of this upgrade, which is replacing the RAM. We already took out the RAM at the beginning. So now you just need to grab your new sticks of RAM and put them into place. So we just take the first stick here and we just kind of put it into the first slot here, the bottom slot, and we just kind of got to try and match it up correctly. You have to come at it at kind of an angle, about a 40, 45 degree angle and just See if I can, it takes a second to kind of get it in there. Oh, there we go. So kind of there and just gently push it in. There we go. So now it's pushed in. Now we just push the edge down until it locks into place. Boom, there we go. So that's the first one. Now we take the second one and do the same thing on the second slot. So just find it there. Ooh. Gently push it in. There we go and then press it down until it locks. All right, so that's everything. Now we are good to go. We can put the cover back on the back and uh, line it up with those dots there and slide it back into place. Um, the only thing left now is to plug it up, turn it on, and to make sure that the computer sees the hard drive and make sure that it sees the RAM. And then if not, then you might have some loose connections there with um, uh, plugging everything up. So you might have to open it back up, but when I did it, um, I didn't have a problem with that. It saw it instantly. I just had to format the drive. There's a setup process for selecting the hard drive to be used for the Mac Mini, but then other than that, you're good to go. You can start uh, using it and putting it to work. Okay, so uh, it's a couple days later, and I'm actually just now getting to starting up the Mac Mini and uh, getting the hard drive all squared away and ready to go. Cause at first, once you plug it in and turn it on, it's not gonna just like boot up and just work. So I thought I'd also cover just how to format the hard drive um, just to cover that as well, just so that you guys can get up and running as quick as possible. So right now, as you can see, um, if you turn the Mac mini on, there is just a file folder with a question mark just because it doesn't know the hard drive that was there is now gone and now it doesn't know where to get a new hard drive or how to uh, transition into that new hard drive. So 
What we have to do is first uh, turn the Mac Mini back off. That's what I'm gonna do right now. We're gonna turn the Mac Mini back on, but this time you're gonna hit a few keys on your keyboard. So hold down Command, Option, Shift, and R, and turn on the computer at the same time. Let's see. Uh, it's hard to hit all these and hit the on button. And that will start it up into recovery mode. All right, so then once you boot it up in recovery mode, you should see this menu right here. And sorry that it's not a little bit higher quality, but uh, you know, you can't screen record while you're in recovery mode. So I had to make do with what I could. But the first thing you do is just go down to disk utility and select that and in disk utility you can then click on the hard drive if everything's working correctly you should see the hard drive right up there in the top left uh, mine says one terabyte samsung ssd 860 and click on that hard drive then you can go over to this tab and select erase then go down to format and make sure mac os extended journaled is selected and then just put in the name of the hard drive whatever you want to name it and then just click erase it'll ask you again are you sure you want to erase it you can click yes and now it's going to format the hard drive for you and uh yeah that's pretty much it you can go back out to the main menu of recovery mode and then just select what you want to do you can restore from a time machine backup if you have a backup to use you can then also reinstall osx um, probably mountain lion and then once that's up and running you can install a newer version of OS, Mojave, Catalina, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So hope that you found that useful as well. Now back to the rest of the video. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on how to do this. Um, like I said, it's not that complicated. And there are a few other videos out there on YouTube of other people talking about how to do this. So if you wanna watch those just for more reference, you can go ahead and do that. That would be beneficial. If you like this, please, leave a like, a comment, and uh, subscribe because I'll be making more videos just like this. Again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I just wanted to let you know that the intro that we shot for this video literally took just as long as me, um, <laughs> me doing the upgrade on this Mac Mini. That's actually how long it took. It, was, it took less time to upgrade this Mac Mini than it did to actually shoot the intro for this video. That's how hard we are working on this. That's how much effort we're putting into this. I don't know why you'd care, but. <laughs> how, how long, it took him over a million, two million subs before he finally got a guy to talk to behind camera. Well, you know what, I have 140 and I already got two guys to talk to behind camera. So take that Peter McKinnon. I'm not even gonna try to be Peter McKinnon. That's not what I wanna do. I don't wanna be Peter McKinnon. At the beginning, after my first couple sips, I said I liked it. I actually still like it at the end of the can and I kinda wanna go get another one. So that is my official review of the black cherry and coffee sparkling water from AHA. I like it and I wanna get another one.